Hello, today I'm going to be unboxing and giving you a first look at the ASUS ROG Maximus Z890 Hero, which is going to be compatible with Intel's new Core Ultra 200 series processors. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is everything that comes in the box with our motherboard. So we've got our quick start guide, we've got some ROG stickers, and we've got some information about Asus web storage. We've got a thank you card, an ROG bottle opener, and we've got a USB drive, which has all our drivers and utilities on it, which is much more useful than a CD. We've got some accessories for our M.2 SSD. So we've got some spare Q slides and Q latches. We've got some rubber pads and also a heat pad. We've got a front panel cable extension adapter. We've got four SATA connectors, an ARGB extension cable, the Wi-Fi antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, and we've also got a bracket here for mounting a fan to help cool our RAM. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, I'm working along the bottom from left to right. First of all, we've got our HD audio connector, and just above it, we've got a CP over voltage jumper. We're then going to turn to the PCIe mode switch, followed by a Thunderbolt stroke USB 4 header. We've then got two 3-pin 5V ARGB headers, followed by three system fan headers. We've then got a forward-facing USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, followed by two USB 2.0 headers. Next to that, we've got a Water Pump Plus header, followed by a Thermal Sensor header. We've then got a Retry button, and at the bottom right of the motherboard, we've got our System Panel header, where you've got to plug in your front panel connectors. Working up the right hand side of the motherboard, first of all we've got a slim SAS connector which can support PCIe 4.0 by 4 mode or up to 4 SATA devices. Next to that we've got 4 SATA ports, followed by another USB 3.2 Gen 1 header and this one is right angled. We've then got two front panel type C headers. The bottom one will support speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, while the top one will support speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second. The top port also supports up to 60 watt fast charging. To get the 60 watt fast charging, you're going to need to plug a PCIe cable from your power supply into the PCIe connector just above the header. And if you don't do this, the charging via the top USB Type-C port is limited to 27 watts. Just above this, we've got a 24 pin connector followed by a flex and power button. The function of the flex key you can change in your BIOS. And then just above this, we've got our motherboard's third and final 3-pin 5V ARGB header. Working along the top of the motherboard, first of all, we've got a postcode status screen with our debug LEDs just below it. We've then got our motherboard's fourth and final system fan header, followed by our IIO pump, CPU opt, and CPU fan headers. And then at the top right of the motherboard, we've got two 8-pin EPS power connectors. The motherboard features a 22 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 power stage design, and you can see we've got massive aluminium heat sinks over our VRM connected with a heat pipe. In the middle of the motherboard, we've got our brand new LGA 1851 socket and standard mounting holes. And we've got a really nice screen with the ROG logo over the motherboard's I.O. cover. The motherboard has four RAM slots and will accommodate up to 192GB of DDR5 at up to 8800 megatransfers per second overclocked. And with the NitroPath technology and the RAM slotage, you should really be able to get the most out of your RAM. The motherboard features two by 16 size PCIe slots. The top one is a Gen 5 slot and it will run in by 16 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. While the bottom slot is a Gen 4 slot which will run in by 4 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the chipset. And just above this we've got a PCIe 4.0 by 1 slot with the PCIe lane coming from the chipset. And it's great to see our top slot features as this is a brand new Q-release slim technology. So this makes it really simple to remove your graphics card from the slot. If you pull it from the middle or the right hand side of the graphics card it stays securely in the slot. Whereas if you want to remove it all you need to do is pull from the left hand side of the graphics card and it will simply come out of the slot. The motherboard has six M.2 SSD slots and you can see we've got a really beefy heatsink over our top slot. To remove the heatsink from the top slot, all you need to do is push the lever down and then you're going to be able to lift the heatsink up and away. Our bottom five M.2 SSDs are behind the bottom heatsink, which is held on with four screws. So in terms of our M.2 SSD slots, we've got three Gen 5 slots and three Gen 4 slots. So the Gen 5 slots are the top slot 
and the two bottom slots on the left hand side. In terms of the PCIe lanes associated with the slots, they all have four PCIe lanes. With the four slots over towards the left hand side, the PCIe lanes come directly from the CPU, while the two slots over to the right hand side, they come via the chipset. So a nice improvement with this generation is that the top Gen 5 slot no longer shares PCIe lanes with the top PCIe slot. So you can store your drive happily here, knowing that your graphics card is still gonna have a full 16 PCIe lanes for it. However, if you do install a drive in the bottom two Gen 5 slots, they're the bottom two slots on the left hand side, they do share PCIe lanes with the top PCIe slot and putting a drive in one of these slots will reduce the PCIe lanes available for your graphics card from 16 to 8. In terms of securing drives in the slots, in the top slot you're going to use ASUS's Q-Slide technology, while the bottom five slots make use of their Q-latches, but either way installing your M.2 drives it should be really straightforward. And it's great to see that we've got a backplate on the back of the motherboard which should offer some great protection. Take a look at our rear I.O. First of all, we've got a BIOS flashback and clear CMOS buttons, followed by a HDMI 2.1 port. We've got two LAN ports on the motherboard. The top one is a 2.5 gigabit per second port, while the bottom one is a 5 gigabit per second port. You'll notice we've got three Type-C ports on the back of the motherboard. The top two are Thunderbolt 4 ports, while the bottom one is a 10 gigabit per second port. We've got eight USB type A ports. The red one supports speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, while the blue one supports speeds of up to five gigabits per second. And you'll notice that one of the bottom red ports has a white outline around it. That's the one you're gonna plug your USB drive into if you want to flash your BIOS. We've then got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. While at the bottom of the motherboard, we've got our audio connectors. So we've got a gold-plated mic in and line out port as well as an SPDIF port. The audio codec that the motherboard uses is the ALC4082, and the motherboard supports 7.1 channel HD audio and Dolby Atmos. So if you are looking to get the most from your brand new Intel Core Ultra processor, ASUS really do seem to have you covered with this motherboard. It's an absolutely gorgeous motherboard and packed full of the features you're gonna want for a high-end build. I don't have any pricing information yet, but when it does go on sale, I'll put links to it in the description so you can click on those to find out how much it's going to cost you. And I'll be getting it into a build on the channel very soon. If you have enjoyed this unboxing, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. And a big thank you to Zeus for sending this motherboard out for me to look at.